Conagra ups its earnings forecast this morning, largely on the back of benefits from the tax cuts that were passed late in 2017. The food company continues to revamp its food and snack portfolio as it adapts to changing tastes. Joining us now from Cagney in Boca Raton is Sean Connolly. He's the CEO of Conagra. Mr. Connolly, nice to have you uh, with us again. Um, you know, Thanks I look at your me. portfolio. Uh, you're welcome. I look at your portfolio. Listen, I, I, I lived off Chef Boyardee in my 20s, but the kids don't eat that stuff as much anymore. And a lot of the question, of course, for Conagra is what are you doing to renovate the portfolio to appeal to the tastes of people in their 20s? And so I guess that would be my first question. Well, the answer is a lot. Uh, you could argue that we are executing one of the most uh, transform significant transformations in the entire CPG space, and central to our transformation is the innovation agenda. This last year, our focus was on frozen foods because we believe frozen foods fit a millennial lifestyle perfectly. But for it to work for millennials, we've got to change the food, make sure we offer modern attributes, great uh, recyclable packaging and super terrific flavors. And we're seeing fantastic traction so far with our innovation in Frozen, particularly with millennials. Uh, yeah, in fact, I know during your presentation, you talked about the fact that uh, consumers 21 to 36 years old uh, with annual incomes and significant have been going up for 30 years uh, in terms of as, a, as an audience. And you wonder what the trend would look like if manufacturers had kept their food modern. So what would the trend look like? Well, it would clearly be better. You know, one of the big storylines in the last few years is that small brands were taking over the world. Well, the truth is big brands are still where the action is. Why? Because the velocities are far better than those of small brands. But only if those big brands, those iconic brands, have been modernized by way of innovation. And what we're doing is modernizing these iconic brands that have terrific uh, household penetration and consumer awareness so that they're contemporary and they're giving consumers the benefits they're looking for. So had the industry done that five, six years ago, we probably wouldn't have seen Frozen fall into a sluggish space. It did, but ConAgra is driving growth into the Frozen set again and we're just getting warmed up. Well, what is it about Frozen that's so appealing for millennials and for potentially their children? It's a great question. Uh, one of the first things that's appealing about Frozen is that millennials are the first generation perhaps ever that are making less money than their parents. So they have to have good value in order to make their household balance sheet work. Historically though, Frozen hasn't appealed to them because it hasn't been the kind of food they're looking for. And essentially when you think of Frozen, it's basically fresh food that is blast frozen so we can deliver a clean label product, a natural product, bold ethnic flavors in a recyclable package, and when we do that, we're finding it fits their household balance sheet very well. The other thing we learned is that when they have children, their consumption of frozen food increases by 25%, and then as those children age and become six and older, it jumps another 26% from there. And why we're excited about that is today, millennial parents, only 32% of them, have children who are age six and older. So that means we've got years of runway here if we keep the pedal to the metal with our innovation agenda. Um, you know, Sean, I was, I was taking a look at some of the research that you put out, and, and you say, or Conagra says, that research shows a typical consumer is eating anywhere from 7 to 12 times a day. Eating anywhere from 7 to 12 times a day, which means that basically you're eating almost every single hour that you could be awake, which is a lot. But that, in terms of your portfolio, that means potentially a big snacking opportunity. Recently, you bought Duke's, which is a, a meat snacks company. Beef jerky and jerky of all sorts is a huge uh, market at this point. Carl had asked the CEO of Tyson if we were at peak chicken. Are we at peak jerky right now? It seems like a very crowded shelf. Well, we've got some terrific brands in very attractive snacking categories. I pointed out today that we've got about a $2 billion snack business at retail, which I think is far larger than people expected, and it spans four very attractive spaces, meat snacks, seeds, popcorn, and sweet treats. The reason those four zip codes are very attractive is they're, they're outgrowing the balance of the snack world by a significant margin, and we've got the number one brands in most of those arenas, or we've got the fastest growing brands, including our, one of our most recent acquisitions, which is the great Angie's Boom Chicka Pop popcorn, which we think is the best ready-to-eat popcorn out there. I'm fascinated by what you're doing with Slim Jims, which we know, I mean, kids, I, kids eat it all the time, but you uh, acknowledge that once people, consumers get into their 20s and 30s, consumption drops, unless, I guess, flavors change, right? 
Yeah, what we found happening was consumers, male consumers usually, who are eating Slim Jim, they get to about the age of 17 and 18, and then they start to leave the franchise because it's not cool for them to carry a two-foot Slim Jim to the workplace or to college. So they're looking for something a little bit more sophisticated. We noticed we were having leakage to the jerky side of the meat snacks business by, by upgrading Slim Jim and offering Slim Jim Premium that we've put into the marketplace now. We can now bridge that young male consumer from their teens into their 20s, and then when they become into, move into their 30s, we have an even more sophisticated meat snack that we offer them by way of Dukes. So we can really run the continuum here with our uh, meat snacks portfolio of leading brands, and they are truly excellent brands, and they're growing, uh, growing superbly. Uh, Mr. Connolly, we appreciate your stopping by today uh, and joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.